Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett. I don't know what's wrong with my audio tonight, but it doesn't seem to be playing completely, but we'll see. Okay, it made it through that. It didn't make it through the last promo, but, you know, uh, one problem after another. Who cares? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen... It's uh, Tuesday night. We'll have a citizen panel a little bit later, but right now we got an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, can I try that again? Ladies and gentlemen from the sunny shores of California, it's the music of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> and his all girl orchestra. And his all girl or- uh, Thank you, Phil Spitalny. <laughs> And those were great, those uh, that thing you sent me. With. Well, I never, you know, it was Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how a violin can be magic. I mean, my father played one, and I never found it to be particularly magic to me, you know. He played well, but it was not, you know, suddenly flowers didn't appear and pigeons didn't come out of a hat, you know, so anyway. Uh, but uh, there was a group called Phil Spitalny and his all-girl orchestra, and I could never see the reason for it. <laughs> there is nothing worse. I, I hate to say, tell you this. There's nothing less sexy than a female playing a tuba or an accordion. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, am I being sexist? Is that sexist? I don't know. I've, I've lost all sense of it. I grew up in an era where I there was... I think everything is sexist these days, so we just have to go with it. <laughs> when I when I was born and when I was growing up, there was no such term as sexist. You know. You're right. You know, uh, and and um, uh, but there was such a thing as not being a gentleman. You know, not being decent to another human being, but you know, I eh, fuck it. I give up on this political correctness (laughs) bullshit. Anyway, how you doing? Good, good. Uh, As you know, the uh, punchline is going down here in San Francisco. Well, let's explain this a little bit. The punchline has been a comedy club in San Francisco for how many years? Since 1978. Since 1978. So that before I started. So that's how. And before before I got to San Francisco. You know, uh, I came to San Francisco, I think, in 80, late 80. Uh, and uh, there was a punchline then. It it didn't start out in in the current location, did it? No, it's always been there. Um, oh. It was, there was a building connected to it called the Old Waldorf, and the punchline was actually the green room for the, uh, it was the music club, and it was a green room for the uh, musicians there. I see. Okay, so uh, uh, they then took part of the old Waldorf, made it the punchline. Then they closed down right. the old Waldorf, didn't they? They closed the old Waldorf like in the early mid eighties. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember that closing. And didn't did, did they move it somewhere else? Isn't isn't what Cobb's Comedy Club now is? What didn't it become the old Waldorf or something? No, I think uh, the Waldorf just it may may have moved some of the uh, where Cobb's is now used to be called Wolfgang's. Wolfgang's, okay, yeah. Which I think was the name of Bill Graham's son. No, it was actually Bill Graham's name, I believe. Oh, it was okay. I know. Yeah, it was his, his, to real, somehow, his real name he, wasn't yeah, Bill. And... It was Wolfgang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And w- what happened was, is the punchline was it started by. Um, uh, uh, was it started by Bill Graham? It was started by some guy named Jeffrey Pollock, who might be related to Kevin. Yes, he was, I think. Yeah. And then uh, I first went down in 1980 and saw a comedy, and then it was kind of the punch. It was kind of dumpy. It had these butcher block tables and old eight by tens and bad wiring running around the place. And the year I started, 81, it was when Bill Graham bought the punchline. 
and he really fixed it up. And turned it into a very nice club. I mean, it yeah, was... Yeah, probably it, one... Uh, I think its reputation is probably one of the top five clubs in the country. Yeah, I mean, comedy. physically and in every other way. Uh, yeah, perfect size for comedy. And, and uh, when Bill uh, died uh, by flying into a, uh electrical tower... Uh, it, it, he, the, the, I guess the family then sold it? It was owned by uh, Graham's company, and they kept it for a while, and then they, it kept getting sold from one company to another. I figured there was four or five, and then uh, the people that have it now is Live Nation. Yeah. Uh, and I, uh, uh, for instance, I, my, I had concerts I did on uh, New Year's, and, and they were... Uh, put together, they were created. They were created by me, but they were administered by uh, Bill Graham Presents. Yeah, uh, and uh, Jeff Wills. And Jeff Wills, and then he went over to Live Nation, I think, when it became Live. When right, and yeah. now he's. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so old. so the Punchline was the premier comedy club in San Francisco and in the Bay Area. I would say. Yeah. You know, I don't Absolutely. think there was anything that came close. There no. were there were other clubs like Cobbs, which were fine clubs. There was nothing wrong with them. There was just something about if you work the punchline, you were working the big room. You know. Yeah. When we started out, the one of the big things you had it was a week at the punchline. That was that made you feel like you were an actual comic. So. Yeah. And uh, and and it, it, that had to have been. Uh, do you remember the first time you played the punchline? Uh, my first week there was June of '84 with uh, Jeremy Kramer and A. Whitney Brown. Wow! Now I had already started doing comedy stuff then, so actually I precede you. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize that. I thought you were there before I was. Uh, and uh, you did a couple of morning shows at the Punchline. A couple. We did dozens, yeah. yeah, lots of them. I mean, whenever we did breakfast with Bennett's, usually they were at the punchline. And I am wearing right now a punchline a 1993 All Stars t shirt. Well, that's a collectible. Is it a collectible? Yeah, yeah. Then why am I wearing it? I better put it in, uh, in plastic yeah. or something. Uh, put that in cellophane. The only thing is, my name isn't on the back of it. Which should be because I did essentially, technically play there by doing those breakfast shows um, there. Yes, but, and, and and not to mention giving them ten thousand plugs over the years. Oh, oh! No, I kept the doors open for Christ's sake. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Now, what has happened to it? Why all of a sudden, after what thirty-five years? Uh, Forty-one. Forty-one years. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Uh, 41 years, why all of a sudden is it closing down? Well, uh, what I heard was they were going to renegotiate the lease a couple of weeks ago, and then they got a call that said, don't even bother coming up. And uh, the rumor is that Google is going to lease the building and use it as a gym for their San Francisco employees. Oh, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> them. That's not confirmed, but that seems to be the uh, the story that's going around. Turning now. a hallowed comedy institution, some you know, San Francisco and comedy were synonymous with each other. I mean, mm -hmm. there was a huge comedy scene in San Francisco. I mean, just amazingly huge, uh, and it was all spurred on by the punchline. It, there were there were several clubs. I mean, uh, let's not diminish what the other clubs did or created but there were other clubs there was uh, the uh, the uh, Cobbs of course which came I think was kind of a late comer uh, Cobbs came in uh, the one on Chestnut actually started in 81 mm -hmm. then there was uh, before that I think was the other cafe yeah and the, the dinosaur the uh, Holy City Zoo yeah. Now, the Holy City Zoo, let's talk about the Holy City Zoo for a second. This was where, if you wanted to start comedy, that's where you went, because you could always yeah, get time there. Exactly. I'm sure I'm sure you were on stage at the at the Holy City Zoo before you ever got on the stage at the Punchline. 
Yeah, I used to go down to the punchline, and well, I was going to go sign up and try to get on there, and some comic told me, no, no, the first time you do comedy, you should do the Holy City Zoo. Yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah. And and so you did the Holy City Zoo, and then you, perhaps if you were lucky, you got to, there were a couple of, uh, there was one other club, what was it, the, uh, the you know. Uh, the other. The, the other, uh, which I think was a reference to the punchline. <laughs> being, <laughs> Being the other, uh, and then there was there was there was Cobbs, but Cobbs came. When did you say Cobbs came? 19? Cobbs actually started in '81, kind of doing open mics and stuff, and yeah. then it got mm-hmm. going actually pretty good in '82. They did a week with Slayton and packed the place, and the comedy boom was starting, and it took off too. Well, still through all of this, through all of this. Uh, the big club was the punchline. There was no yeah. question about it. Uh, this was where everybody wanted to be. And there were, were a lot of people who came into town and tried to supplant them, including, uh, let's see here, didn't the comedy, uh, uh, didn't, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, the improv came in. The improv a... came in. They couldn't, they couldn't stay to keep their doors open. Punchline was no. still too powerful. Uh, I mean, it beat off a lot of competitors and and big competitors. The improv was a big competitor because they had a national reputation because uh, they got that thing on A&E years ago called An Evening at the Improv with Mm -hmm. Bud Friedman. And somebody said the two most uh, seen figures on uh, A&E were Bud Friedman and Hitler. (laughs) So, um, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, this club, the punchline, was the, the club. And then they had three of them. They had one out in uh, Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek, that then, was a great one. And then they opened one in Sacramento. And you would think that, hey, when they do that, you know, some of them would fail, but they were all very successful. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. And, and did they look alike? I can't remember. I, I, I do, do yeah, they kind of had the same decor and uh, looked uh, pretty much uh, alike, a uh, little different layout, uh, but uh, pretty much the same. Yeah, and uh, and of course they would then uh, somebody like a Bobby Slayton would come to town. He would do the punchline San Francisco, then he could do the punchline Walnut Creek, and then he could finish up doing the punchline Sacramento. Right. You know, so they could really they could offer major comics a a, a good deal. Now we're. We're sitting here crying about the demise of the punchline, but in what, many ways, it, didn't it come to an end a few years ago when they started? They stopped booking a lot of local San Francisco talent, which basically was what filled their room constantly. Um, yeah, that started, uh, God, I'm trying to think about when that there was so much local talent here, they didn't get many outside headliners. And uh... Well, I mean, for instance, I had my show, and I'm not going to brag here, but my show people listened to, and then they heard comics, and it was kind of like uh, uh, a sampler, if you will, for a comic. In other words, Larry Brown comes on. Uh, Larry Brown, uh, everybody thinks it's kind of funny, so they hear he's playing the punchline, so he can draw people into the punchline. So all these people that were on my show tended to get jobs as uh, either either the opening act, the uh, uh, headliner, or as say a, a second act. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it, most of the pool was from San Francisco. I mean, if you look week to week, it wasn't like uh, they brought in somebody from out of town. It, it was, yeah, it was uh, Bob Rubin and Durst and Warren Thomas and Rick Reynolds and. Bob Sarlot and uh, yeah, basically local people, and um, then all of a sudden, I guess they decided at some point this wasn't a good a good deal anymore, and they started hiring from out of town. Yeah, it was probably after the uh, the comedy boom went bust in the early '90s, so they figured they'd try something different. Did it go bust in the early '90s? Because I was yeah. I was there until '97, and it seemed to still be going fairly strong. It it tanked hard in '91, then started to come up a little back in the mid '90s, but never. Well, you like know it why was. you know why it tanked in '91? Because uh, you left town. Because <laughs> I got fired. Yeah. And I wandered in the wilderness for. Uh, 
about uh, oh, I guess eight months, something like that. <laughs> and then they brought me. They entered the gates of hell in Miami. Yeah, they brought me back. So you know, uh, that was you know. Uh, I mean, I hate to brag, but I I ha I was a a font of free publicity for that. Oh yeah, for the, unbelievable for the comedy scene in San Francisco. Uh, and, um, it, uh, you know, and when I came back, it was never, it was never quite the same, no. you know, um, uh, and I had thoughts of maybe changing the nature of the show at one point when I came back because of that, but I didn't because, you know, why fight with a proven, uh, proven record, you know, but I was never able to gain the same momentum after I came back that I had before I left, okay? Uh, and, um, but here, so here is this club, which is, if, if we now have managed to put it in proper perspective, was the premier place for comedy in San Francisco, which was comedy town. There were two big comedy towns in the United States. One was Boston, Right. And the other was San Francisco. And a lot of times, some people migrated between the two. I mean, um, all of a sudden, at my doorstep on my radio show came a guy by the name of Bob Goldthwaite. And yeah, who hadn't been doing that great in Boston and then became a, a phenomenon out here. And uh, then Kevin Meany went from here back to Boston and became huge. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was a huge, huge... Uh, uh, Success for Bob. Uh, here's, a, here's a great story. I, I, I always love to tell this story. Uh, all of a sudden, one day, somebody says, hey, you want this guy Bob Goldthwait on? I go, okay, fine. So I have him on. He comes in, and he's, rawr, 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 rawr. you know, the, <laughs> the, the act that he did, that screaming character, which was a beautifully thought-out character. And, uh, I mean, the day that Bob Goldthwaite lost it was the day that he thought that everybody wanted to see the real Bob Goldthwaite. And nobody did. They wanted that character, you know. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, it was pretty, it, he was pretty, he came on the show. And the reason he liked me and the reason we became so close and the reason he liked doing my show was I never compromised the character. And the minute he walked in, I knew he was doing a character. So I played to the character. I didn't say, so, Bob, what do you really like? You know, which yeah. would be the tendency of most cheesy morning radio show hosts to do. I never tried to compromise that character. I played to it. And he loved that. After the show, he said to me, gee, you never once, you know, tried to make me break character. And I said, that's not my job. <laughs> you know? My job is to take your character and to play to it. And, and uh, so he started doing my show constantly. And he became, how, how can we describe the success that he had in San Francisco? I don't think uh, anyone became bigger than he did here. I mean, it, that was a real, on a local level, that was like Steve Martin nationally I, in 1977. I, it was just insane. I started producing concerts with him. Okay, um, and, Selling out huge rooms. And huge rooms. I mean, uh, thousand seaters, okay, like the Palo Alto Keystone or whatever. Um, it's literally selling out thousand seat rooms in five minutes. Okay, when the tickets went on sale, it was like there was suction. Boom. I never had to worry about selling those things. They were sold out, you know, weeks ahead of time. Uh, that's how big Bob Goldthwaite was in San Francisco. Uh, he was just huge. And I remember we did the last show we ever did with Bob Goldthwaite was, uh, and in fact, I have a video up on um, Gabnet TV on Roku of uh, uh, the show we did at the uh, um, Circle Star Circle Theater uh, in which, uh, I, 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 were you down there? Because I think maybe no, you're, but I I've heard uh, several people I've talked to. I think Dana Carvey was on that show, and Ruben and Warren. They said it was the greatest comedy show they ever saw. Yeah, 
Yeah. And and uh, we did it there. It was called The Bobcat Goes to Hollywood because he had gotten a job to go do movies down in Hollywood. Police Academy. Police Academy. Right. And so this was kind of a farewell to Bob Goldthwaite. And, uh, I mean, it was a phenomenal show. I mean, as I said, we had Warren Thomas on it. We had uh, Dana Carvey. And uh, who else besides? It was one other. Bob act. Rubin. Bob Rubin. Bob Rubin. So we had four big acts. And it... It it just uh, it killed, and and he was just this phenomenon in San Francisco. But let me tell you a story. So he's such I've made him, I've helped make him into a phenomenon. People say, oh, you made Bob Goldthwaite. No, Bob Goldthwaite made Bob Goldthwaite. Bobby Slayton made Bobby Slayton. Larry Bubbles Brown made Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown. I simply was a facilitator. Okay taking advantage of your enormous talent for my own well-being. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I, so I have this friend. I can't remember what friend came to town. And I said, uh, listen, I want, I want you to see this guy. He's been on my show, Bob Goldthwaite. He's playing cops tonight. He was right up the street from where I live. It might have been Shecky. I can't remember. And um, I said, let's go up and see him. Uh, and, you know, of course, I know the club owners, so I just walk in the door. You know, I don't have to pay to get in or anything else. Um, so we go up, we walk up, and we walk into the front door of Cobbs. And it's like you open the door, and it's like, you ever open up a full refrigerator where you can't put anything anymore in it, you know? It was like, it was like that. I couldn't even get in past the front door. It was that packed. So we had to turn around and go home. I mean, I just couldn't. You know, there was no way that I was going to, uh, uh, that I was going to be able to uh, 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 solve this little problem. Uh, so we went home. And uh, uh, I could not get into a show simply because of how popular I had helped make somebody be in, in San Francisco. But, I mean... Uh, you know, Goldthwaite was a phenomenon. I don't think his career has lived up to that. I thought his career would be far bigger than it ever became. But I think maybe Bob Goldthwaite was a bit on the self-destructive side, too, you know. As many comics are. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes it, 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 things overwhelm you. I think there was this desire on Bob's part to say, well, I think people would like to see who the real Bob Goldthwaite is. And nobody really cared about the real Bob Goldthwaite. They loved the character. This character was, it was almost, I can't, it's, it's hard to describe to somebody who never saw it, but kind of Chaplin-esque in a way, in that he screamed, he shouted, but it was out of fear, out of personal fear. And he created this really fully formed character who he didn't ever break ranks with while he was doing it. I mean, it was all... Am I right? It was a consistent character. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, uh, and it, he just caught on out here like it was insane. Yeah. And people... I first saw him at the, at the Holy City Zoo when he first moved out here in 83. And I thought... When I first saw him, I thought, oh, my God, he's going to scare people. And they just... <laughs> they just showed you what I know. But uh, they just took to him, like, right away. They loved him. They loved him. And... and uh, um, it, it it was a phenomenon for him. It was a phenomenon for me because I, you know, it made me a lot of money. It's not that I didn't share it with him, you know, because I, I was always very good at making sure the comics got what they were worth. And in his case, he was worth quite a bit, you know. Uh, I mean, if I took a thousand-seat house and sold it out, at uh, in those days it was something like 15 bucks a ticket, 20 bucks a ticket, I certainly should share, I had to share part of that with the place venue that I was doing it at, but then, then I would share whatever I got with him and with, and with the other comics when I did other shows as well. So, you know. Uh, but it is, it's sad to see the punchline go because the punchline was the comedy club in San Francisco. It, and and to see it go because Google wants to turn it into a gym makes me want to yeah. just like you know <laughs> go, you know that pretty much sums up San Francisco. It more or less it? sums up Google. 
You know, I mean, people come in. See, c- companies like that come in from out of town. We're starting to run out of time here. We got about a minute left. Uh, they come in from out of town, and they have no idea of the of of the impact of say a place like the Punchline. And rather than say, "Hey, we bought the building, but let's do everything we can to keep this San Francisco institution going," they don't give a shit. Yeah, because they they, they have no history with the Punchline. And, it, and it, it, they don't realize how many comedians they're going to put out of work, how many comedians they're going to prevent from having their first stage time in a place like that, you know? So when was the last time you played the punchline, by the way? Oh, a couple months ago. So you were still still there. What, middle act? I still do it, yes. I uh, do it about... There's so many comics now. We used to get like three weeks a year at the punchline. Now nobody gets more than one. Oh, okay. Okay. But, but we're still working it. You know, but, but it's you're still, still a great club. Yeah, still a great club. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, it's a shame to see it go. It's kind of like just one more thing that's gone. So this week we're losing the punchline and Doris Day. You know. Yeah, I know. And uh, if you want to see the punchline, the movie The Conversation, Gene Hackman actually walks in front of it. Oh, Okay. Uh, and, and hey, listen, we've run out of time. That flew by. Yeah, just like uh, like life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, Larry, we'll talk to you next week, okay? Good talking to you, Alex. Thanks. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. I've got trouble with this. Oh, this program of mine. It's uh, a, uh, it does the, uh, let's see here. Uh, close window. Okay, now I'll reopen it. And uh, it's, uh, it's the audio program. Yeah, you know, the thing that makes all the themes and everything work. And when I was trying to start it earlier, it was just slow and starting. Let's see how it does now. Let's just see for the fun of it here. Does it work? Okay, good. Just, yeah. Okay, good. All right. All right. Everything's working now. It, nothing ever works. Anyway, um, I got some things to talk about, but I'll, I'll get to them when people call. By the way, see what I'm wearing? I'm wearing that Punchline All-Stars t-shirt. Um, and that's the club that's going out of business. And uh, word has it, well, I'll talk to, I'll, let, me, let me go online here. I know Ray was trying to call a few minutes ago without even seeing that I was active. That's the trouble with the new Skype. It doesn't notice when you're active, okay? So anyway, the lines are open now. Uh, no, it, you, if, you, if, you don't, if you say invisible, it just show, doesn't show people you're on, but people can still call anyway. Well, here comes Ray Renati. He's usually not in this early. Let me see here. First of all, I got to uh, turn up the audio there, and let me also put him in a square here. Uh, da, 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 and he's uh, obviously uh, out, yeah. uh, out and about riding the bike. Riding the bike. Uh, and the uh, here, here we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. There you hey, are. Why? Why did you? you know, why did you try to call so early? You're usually uh, you don't do that. Because I thought they had a huge delay, and. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to say something about Google. Uh huh. I I wouldn't. I don't think like that rumor about Google buying the punchline for a gym. Mm -hmm. We should probably wait to see what happens because Google bought my theater company that I had founded. Mm -hmm. Um, They bought our building and they wanted. They kicked us out, but they built us on their dime, which cost over two million dollars. What? Yeah. Down the street. So yeah. they were more than generous. Well, it, it, I don't care about generous. If they, if, if, uh, turn down your audio, Charlie. Uh, if, but they if, built us. No, what? Uh, well, yeah, but they, if, they clo- they, if they close this down to build a gym, that's going yeah, to be awfully disgusting. You know? I'm just wondering if that's a rumor, though. Uh, I, 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 I don't know that it's a rumor. In San oh, Francisco, okay. the way things have been going, it, it could be very real. Yeah, that's true. And if it's right. true, if it's true, I may drop using, um, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, YouTube. Gmail? 
Oh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube yeah, right. As my yeah. thing to do yeah. a show on. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, you know, I, the, I, if, if it's true, and I, mm -hmm. I suspect that there's, a, you know, uh, Bubbles isn't one to give out with false rumors and things like That's that. That's true. That's true. You know. I know. And I know. Uh, the rumor, the story he told was that the punchline uh, was up for renewal for their, you know, $23,000 yeah. $23, a month, okay, uh, was up for their lease renewal, and they had been accepted. And then Google bought the building. Uh, and they turned around and said, "Sorry, we're not going to renew your lease." They w they reneged on it. Okay, so that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what happened to us. And mm -hmm. then after about six months, they say, "Okay, we don't want to put you on the street, so we're going to build you a theater." But we were a nonprofit, so they probably won't do that for Punchline. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. who knows? Who knows? But anyway. Yeah. So I may be a. Uh, 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 Getting a little delayed here, folks, if there's a problem. We didn't have it the other night, but uh, I, I've been dealing with, um, uh, with several things here. First of all, Skype, okay? Uh, as you know, we've had a constant problem with Skype lately where before I get a thing and there are four little deals that go on there, and you, uh, one is, I can't remember what the first one, one, one is uh, stop the call, one is a video, one is microphone, and the third one is, uh, I, anyway, the one on the end is add the person to the group. And all you had to do was click on that and it put them right on the group, right? Well, all of a sudden they, uh, they did a, uh, what do you call it, upgrade of their, of their program a couple of weeks ago. You all know because you all got it, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, ever since then, uh, whenever I try to answer a call that way, which is the way you're supposed to be able to answer a call, it immediately uh, says a missed call. And then on the machine that gets the missed call, like Charlie's, what does it say, Charlie? Yeah, your signal's too weak or something like that. Yeah. And now everybody gets that. Everybody. All right. So I write on I go the only place I can go is to the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Skype uh, gripe blog and I gripe about this because it's obviously nothing we did here. It's just that we upgraded the program and the program won't do that now. And and then I have to like what I did with Charlie a few minutes ago. I have to call him back. All right, and um, uh, so I put this thing up. And all of a sudden, I guess some person either associated with Microsoft or does some stuff for Microsoft or whatever says, well, what's your problem? And I told him the problem. And then he asked me again what the problem was. And I told him again what the problem was. And I told him, you know, all, all the things we did. And I said, it's not only me, it's not only my show, but it's also the, uh, the, sh the, the people who use the same line after and before me who are having exactly the same identical problem now. So it isn't just me. And, uh, you know, then, they, then the guy asked me to send, like, screen saves of the thing. So I simulated it by having one of my accounts call in, and then I had another account over on Mar Marjorie's machine call in, and that was the second one. I got all the, all the graphics they needed, all this, and I sent that in. The guy went, well, wow, you're, you're sending all the stuff we, we need. I'll send it on to them. The next thing I know, I get a message from somebody, either at Skype or maybe it's one of the people on this thing saying, well, have you tried doing such and such? And I said, I already said that in all the other things. I mean, he wanted me to re-say, he asked a whole bunch of questions that would re-answer all the questions I had already answered in my previous posts. And it's just, they have a driving, just driving me fucking crazy. Come on, Skype, admit you've got a fucking problem and do something about it. Don't try saying, gee, you know, it's probably you, you know, you probably... Uh, don't. <laughs> and then the, the person that wrote, I always wrote and said, the first person who calls always gets in. It's the second person that calls, and the third person, the fourth person, and this guy writes, so it's always the first person you call? And I went, will you go back and read my fucking letters? No. It, it's crazy. It's maddening. It's a company that will, under no conditions, admit they make a mistake. 
you know. And I wish there were somebody, please, you know, there's room for an alternative to Skype. Yeah. You know? Uh, I don't know. Is is Phil is Phil dead tonight? Anybody hear about Phil dying or anything? No. Because uh -huh. usually he, he? he's always called by the now by this time of night. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But. It seems to me that when Skype first came out, mm -hmm. I seem to remember one or two other competitors that did the same thing. But I don't. I think they're gone. I don't think they were competitors. No, oh, they weren't. Not exactly in that way. You know, everybody goes, "Have you tried Zoom?" I looked at all of them. I've looked at all of them, folks. Don't suggest anything. I've looked at all of them. Here it comes Phil. Now I'll I'll have to probably call him back, right? Yes, because it says Phil Meyer missed call. So then I have to go up here and I have to do this and it's, I hate this. I just hate this. And now it's it's calling Phil who will now of course pick up and then we will be able to put him uh, in the number three slot. Uh, let me see here. Let me go. Um, no, it's, uh, Charlie, we don't have him in there yet, so we'll just wait a second. Now we'll uh, go. I seem to be coming in twice. Uh, I, I don't know why. Let me, let me shut it down. Sh shut what down? Uh, my Skype for a second. Oh, okay. All right. Well, All right. anyway. Uh, see, I mean, nothing works right, right? Now he'll call again, and of course I'll answer it, and it'll say Phil Meyer missed call. You know, I was coming in twice when when I first called too. What do you mean and you were, went what away? Mean, what do you mean you I could were... hear my I could hear myself twice. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. And then it faded off and got better. Yeah. Well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I I give up. <laughs> I give up on this. Let me see here. There we go. There and, and then Phil missed call, and then uh, I have to go up here to Phil. And then I go Phil Meyer, and then I go add, and then it will call him, and then he will call back. And, you know, getting this show going is the most boring part of this show. Are you okay now, Phil? Yeah, I, it gave me, when you called me back, another set of camera, microphone, and so forth. I clicked on the wrong one. Oh, I see. It was your fault then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there's Phil. Okay. Hey, so, yeah. I'm from Skype. I'm here to help. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little delayed already, I notice, but anyway. Wow, it's just three of us, huh? Yeah, yeah, well. Hey, yeah. Alex, I hate to say this, but just a thought. Have you tried to replicate it on another account uh, that you might have? Uh, no. Uh, okay. But, but uh, I, there's, I, I mean, I could. I could give it a try, but I, I don't think I'll have any different result. And if I don't, if I do have a different result... Then why is my uh, Skype fucking up? What's wrong with Skype? I know. No, you know? I know. I know. Yeah. You know. So I mean, and and, and it all started and, with that upgrade. And all yeah, it all started when the upgrade happened. So you figure that one out, you know. And uh, so that's my gripe number one. You ready for gripe number two? It's the sure. second, second day in a row I sign on to see how my machine is doing. They're still diagnosing it which makes me suspect they haven't done anything yet, that that's just what they go to next, and it just stays there until they actually diagnose it. Um, I keep thinking, what happens if they can't fix it? Uh, I got a feeling since they touched it, they own it. Really? And uh, Yeah, and if they can't fix it, I think they're going to provide you a replacement. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so too. A refurb. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'll, I'll wait. You know, I sure would like to get it back because it has the power to do the show where I don't get, you know, a little out of sync. But and it's not that bad yet. Um, so that, that got me. And then the third thing uh, that got me today, I, I live in this apartment house where the people who run the apartment house are such cheap fucking bastards and assholes that they're willing to charge people $7,000 a month rent, but they don't have a concierge. Okay? Now, what building that has $7,000 rents doesn't have a concierge? Some, uh, some, a lot of them. Some, or somebody there who can, if, if UPS comes by, can take the packages, right? You mean like a doorman? Your building a needs doorman. one. Just, yeah. Your building needs one just because of the configuration. Because of the configuration of the site. They don't, yeah. they don't have one. 
And so I constantly, yeah. I, every now and then when I'm doing UPS, it, when I'm doing uh, Amazon, I've got to pray my, my package gets here. And today, I was here all day, okay? I, could, I can hear the bell from the back room here, uh, and it never rang once, and I get a thing saying, sorry, you weren't there. Uh, they're not only is UPS not going to deliver it tomorrow, they're going to deliver it to a UPS access point. Mm. And that drives me crazy. You know, I mean, I, I, let's say I'm crippled, okay? And the reason I do Amazon is because it comes to the door. And this happens all the fucking time. I mean, less with UPS, but I've got to deal with uh, with uh, Amazon. Uh, no more USPS because they're terrible. And uh, please, if you don't have to, no FedEx. Yeah. yeah. I got a uh, Amazon delivery today, and these guys took a picture of the door and the package laying on the floor in front of the door. Well, I look at the picture and. It's not my door. Uh, I but there was <laughs> wait the, wait wait the, a minute wait a minute hold on a second let's back up you say that you saw them taking the picture in front of your front no, door no 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 oh. no they send you a picture you order something they deliver it and you see a photograph of your package uh, leaning against the door uh, supposedly your door I've never gotten well, that never had that well uh, yeah it's uh, it must be something new. So, uh, because the last two things I bought, uh, actually three things, I, I got the picture. So, uh, I'm looking at this picture, and there's a floor, and there's a, a walk-off mat, you know, like a, a you know welcome mat, mm -hmm. in front of the door. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a welcome mat in front of my door. First of all, nobody's the, welcome. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You're social. <laughs> yeah. oh. and, and, but I'm looking at this welcome mat, and I said, you know, I recognize that mat. It belongs to an apartment on the way to the elevator. So I'm walking down the hall, and there's the mat, there's the package, and uh, I look on the package, and it's got my name on it. So the uh, Amazon writes you a thing that says, when they send you the picture, uh, you know, what do you think of your delivery? And I said, that's not my door. <laughs> and did they write you back? No, no. Uh, See, I mean, what, what is it? What good does it do? I called I, Amazon and I said, um, uh, I was here. I want a redelivery of this package. Now, in the old days with UPS, especially, you could call them, ask for a redelivery, and usually within an hour or two, they redelivered. Yeah. This is this is the photo. Yeah. That's the package, and mm -hmm. that's the uh, the little mat in front of the door. Right. Well, Not anyway, my door. Any, anyway, listen to what I'm saying. So uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, you, you were saying, uh, I forgot to <laughs> redelivery. Oh Post yeah. Oh, you could ask for you could ask for a redelivery, and UPS would redeliver. So I mm -hmm. so I call Amazon. I say I want a redelivery. They said, Well, we don't know if we can do that. What? Here's the number for UPS. I said, Wait a minute. I got it from you guys. You 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 call them. Well, we can't give them your phone number. I said, I'll give them the phone number once you call them. Okay. So they call them. So they say, okay, somebody will call you within the next two hours. I said, the next two yeah. hours, that goddamn UPS truck's probably going to be in Philadelphia by then, you know? Um, but within about 10 minutes, I get a call from UPS, and I say, I want a redelivery. And they said, oh, that was Trevor who, who tried to deliver it. He had 30 other packages he delivered to the building, which I don't believe because I've never seen UPS with 30 packages, Okay. Yeah. I said, well, obviously, then he got in the front door. And if he got in the front door, why the fuck didn't he ring my doorbell? Well, he said, they tried. And they did. I said, they didn't try shit. And I said, now, get me my package. And they said, well, we can't do it. It'll be at a, a, a UPS access point. I said, if I didn't call you, how would I know that it was going to be at a UPS access point tomorrow? Well, they're supposed to leave a note. I said, he didn't leave a note. He said, well, you know now. <laughs> I said, where is the access point? 280 um, West uh, uh, 118th Street, which is, you know, a short walk for me. Uh, uh, except on a day when I feel lazy. Uh, but anyway, a uh, short walk for me. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, but suppose I want it delivered to my front door. And he said, well, we're not doing that. I'm going, what is wrong with UPS? 
They now usually I have to admit they're pretty good. If I get the right guy, he knows who I am. He leaves the thing at my front door. You know, I go out many times and I go, oh, a present. You know, I mean, they they leave it for me. This guy didn't even fucking try, and that just drives me crazy. And I went out looking for the truck because sometimes they're in the area, and I couldn't find the truck. So anyway, I went up to this 280 place, the access point, and turns out it's a it's an incense shop. Mm. And this lady inside uh, said to me, "Yeah, well, they do it. They deliver every morning." She said, "Write down your name. Write down your phone number. I'll call you when it comes." Okay, which was very nice of her. Uh, but uh, that, that amazed me. Excuse me, my eye has been. I've had all kinds of problems with my eye with uh, 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 allergies. So, uh, and I did have. I, I, Maybe I'll go out while you're talking and keep just wet a piece of paper. I find that if I wet a pad of paper and put it on my eye, it calms it down. Uh, How about a drop or something? No, I try know. drops. It's just, it's horrible. I mean, I'm almost yeah. like blocked. A stake? Put a stake on it. Put a stake on <laughs> Nobody there. punched them. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, that kind of cure for a black eye. You'd rather have a black eye than waste the money on a yeah. $10 stake, you know. Um Go get your paper. Huh? What, what, go get your paper no, while you got three of us and we're not fighting. No, uh, uh, <laughs> that's okay. Well, see, what I do is I uh, take a piece of paper like this, and then I fold it many, many times over and make it into so a So it's little, like origami, huh? Like a little pad. Make it into a pad. See, folks? Origami with it's, that. It's getting smaller. See? Okay. Um, that's what she said. Even out of sync. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, oh, okay. So now let me run to the bathroom. This will take one about two seconds, right? Uh, and and wet it. Not if you have to pee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna take like a couple hours probably. Yeah. Does it sound really bad with the fans in here? Uh, we can hear it, but uh, yeah. you know it's not, not terrible. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, we so lost Conway. Yeah. I know. And, and uh, Doris Day. Yeah. yeah, you know, we got to thank Tim Conway for his service at McHale's and, Navy. Uh, we, yeah. um, <laughs> our, uh, oops. I love that guy. What? And Doris Day was awesome, we, too. Yeah, oh, he was talking about Tim Conway. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Now, all of a sudden, what happened to my pictures here on the screen? Uh, uh, it's, oh, maybe it's delayed. No, I've got a problem here. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. All right. It was. It was just. It, it, you know. It's. It's the uh, Mac and the little things it does when you move stuff. And I touch something wrong, and everything disappeared off to the side. But now it's back up again, and we're fine. Okay. And I seem more in sync. I don't know why, but anyway. Yeah. No, you see, I do this because what it does is that rather than rub my eye, it calms my eye down, and I can just see, and then it's not, and it takes the roughness out of the paper too. So. Oh. That's my little clue uh, to the whole thing. So anyway, so I mean, it's been just you know, I'm just it's just one fucking thing after another that goes wrong, and I'm, I get very tired of this. Well, know? on Sunday, that package I just got delivered was a redelivery uh, because the first one leaked in the package, so I wanted to return it, and uh, I had they don't just you know send you a return coupon and you go to the UPS store. They wanted me to bring it to the Amazon store which uh, is a short walk from my apartment. And uh, tell them the Amazon fuck you. Tell them fuck you. Tell them I'm a cripple and I can't do that. <laughs> well, uh, what happened was you go to the Amazon store and uh, they've got a Pete's Coffee in there. And it is a big <laughs> sign that says if you return something, yeah. they'll give you a dollar off your coffee. So I said, okay, I'm, you know, uh, I said, you know, I'm returning. What, and, is uh, with the, what is with this? Here, here are a bunch of people who literally killed the, the brick and mortar store. All right? Yeah, right. And they decide to open up brick and mortar stores? There's two of them now, one in Walnut Creek, and I think the other one's in the city. And, uh, you know, uh, it's actually, an, it's, it's like a mini uh, Barnes & Noble. Uh, uh, when I go to my uh, uh, underwater photography association meetings on that uh, one Friday a month, it's in San, it's in San Mateo, 
and there's a Barnes and Noble in San Mateo. So I make sure I stop there and I get my latte uh, before I head over to the meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love Barnes and Noble. But uh, this is uh, it's actually a very interesting store. Uh, There's no price tags. Uh, What you do is you go up to the. A uh, little barcode with your phone. You put your this thing. This is assuming. On. See again, this is shit because that's yeah. assuming you have a phone. That's our phone. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, if you live in Walnut Creek, you got a phone. So a- no, anyway, but, it's no, like but Palo Alto. suppose you're somebody. Suppose you're Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, then he can't get a book. Uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, you you can. There's some kiosk you can go to and punch the stuff in. And see the price. But if you take your phone, are they too lazy? Are they too lazy to take a little card and put it slided into a thing? Yes, the price changes, and it changes based on what your account. So, for instance, I walk up to a book, and I have this my. This is what's app wrong open. with the world today. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I have the Amazon app open, mm-hmm. and I walk up, and it and it and the camera. Uh, uh, takes over, it scans the code, and then it tells you the price. And the price was greatly discounted off of not only the price that was on the cover of the book, uh, you know, because I owned the book. I just d- wanted to see how much they were selling it for. So I asked the guy, and he says, yeah, th- he says, the prices change, and this way you get the most accurate price uh, uh, you know, uh, for the day and for your account. And what so this prime. has a tendency to say is that on Monday, the price of something you buy on Amazon is going to be different than it is on Tuesday. That's what the guy said. You know, and I have done Plus, that. Plus, I'm Amazon you, Prime, but you, but you, and I got a different but you, price. But you know who I do that? Said. Who I do that to to get the best deal possible is oh, Best, Buy. Best Buy. What I do is I wait for something, and I go online, uh, and there's a there's a hard drive or a certain price, and I keep looking at it every day and every day and every day until I see it go down to its lowest price, and I immediately hop down to Best Buy, show it to them, and walk out with it cheap before the price goes up in the afternoon. You, you know, know what happens to me? Every time you look at something, uh, the price goes up if I don't buy it. So uh, uh, whether it's Amazon or, eBay, you know, some of these things, you... you you, you look at the price, you see a price, I say, okay, and you go back there uh, the day later or two days later, yeah. and the price is higher. If the price, is, if the price is lower, I think you can actually get a hold of Amazon and have them give you a rebate on it. Well, it, it's just that it, it, the, I see it on Monday, and it's $10. I go back on Wednesday, and it's $12. So hmm. uh, it's, it's not that it's, I didn't buy it when the buy-in was good. Hmm. And uh, and the price changed, and it went up. Fuck them all. Goes down Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Including airline tickets. Yeah, fuck them all. Fuck Amazon. I'm going to buy less and less from Amazon. From here on in, if I see an electronic I need, I'm going to look and see what it is on Amazon. I'm going to go down to Best Buy. I'm actually going to get out of the house and go down to Best Buy and say, hey, here's the price on Amazon. Walk out the door with it. Was, same day. Was Ray raising his hand or wiping sweat? I was raising my hand. Yeah. 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 I have a little uh, widget on my browser. When I go on Amazon, it scans all the prices of that item all over the place. It also scans uh, Amazon's histor- historical prices. Oh. And tells you how many price changes they've had. And what's Where do probably you get gonna that? Happen. I can send it to you. I can't remember the name. It's great. Right. I use well, it all the time. And what have you found? Um, that Amazon's prices changes their prices all the time on almost everything. Like from week to week, or sometimes two or three times in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there, and, for um, me, it, it's always going up. Is there Although some, they're almost yeah. always the best price. Is there yeah. something the happening tonight I don't know about? Uh, yeah, where is everybody? Yeah, where is everybody? And also watching this, there are less people watching this than normally watch us. I don't know. Basketball? Yeah. Huh? Basketball? Uh, no. no. I thought the basketball was over. No, no, it's no, like no, semifinals no. now. Oh. Yeah, well, still got playoffs going. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it was quarterfinals before, so you could have more people watching. Yeah. What the oh. hell? You know. Yeah. So. Well, maybe I'll just close down early tonight and get some sleep. Yeah, but if they're watching basketball, you ought to just call in and let Alex know so he doesn't get upset. Well, you yeah. know, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> we, well, we just got another couple of people watching. Wow, it's really, uh-huh. it's really strange tonight, and I'm tired. I'm tired all the time. And I don't know if it's just sheer boredom. Well, you know. happy days will be here again. Tomorrow is Phil Free. 
It is? <laughs> I'll tell you, our show on Friday was maybe the best show we've done all year. Yeah, yeah you didn't talk yeah. about Trump. No, we, we, we had a good show. We, we, it was our sports edition. We did The whole show was about sports. Yeah, I listened uh, afterwards. Yeah, it was, and it was probably one of the best shows we've had. So, you know, when you take a day off, I don't get worried anymore. Yeah, that's great. I have to say, I listened, I listened to it. It was really good. I watched the whole thing. It was really entertaining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a good yeah. show. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that uh, didn't you uh, preempt it with uh, the video of uh, uh, that you won the uh, Emmy for? Or the... Well, I didn't yeah. preempt it. I ran the uh, Emmy Award yeah. winning piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I watched that. I had never seen it before. And uh, it, it was interesting. And that it was good. And maybe the show was better because you actually created the you created the show or, you know, around what you just did. Well, I mean, uh, no, I think the show was great because you weren't on it, first of all. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and, and um, uh, I, I just think the fact that we had a topic that we don't normally touch on mm -hmm. uh, made it uh, 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 interesting and unusual. You know. Well, you know, Trump is the low-hanging fruit, and I think people are just getting bored with, uh, you know, the, the easy pickings. Well, you know? I, no, you know something? I don't think that's true. I don't think they're bored with it. I think that they're frustrated by it, and they find that for all the griping they do, it doesn't seem to change anything. Uh, you know, and, well, uh, well, you know. Let's see how much griping they do now that the, uh, the investigators are being investigated. It, it, believe me, uh, it, you know, that, that's, that, that's low-hanging fruit for Trump. You know, I mean, <laughs> come on. You know, you, you, you don't. You, you, once they come out with a decision like that, you kind of let it lie. Now they, you know, the only thing that's still open to my way of thinking is obstruction, and uh, I think there's an argument for that. And and there they there I think they have a right to go because Mueller did not disprove it and did not say it didn't exist. He just said he wasn't going to prosecute it. Um, Can I ask you something? Wait a minute, let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Let me oh, finish. Sure. What I'm saying is, is that uh, it, it would be better for Trump to just let it go and say, okay, if you want to look for collusion, you know, for obstruction of justice, go give it a try. You know, we'll answer any questions you want. Just act blasé about it. But he acts so fucking guilty. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what the right is saying is that Mueller's job is not to uh, exonerate or, or or to his job is to charge or not to charge, and uh, no, and his job Barr's wasn't. Job, no, his job wasn't to charge or not to charge. His job was to file a report and then allow the other people to either charge or not charge. Either the right. the, the either the the uh, uh, you know the federal attorney, you know the. Uh, Attorney General, Rosenstein or, 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 Barr. or, or the Congress of the United States, who has the right to do that as well. You know, they can but impeach him. But that's their him. oversight. Wait a minute, they can impeach him. In other yeah, words, but, they, that's, but their oversight. Yeah, they're, but they're, 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 uh, their oversight, but they're also, <laughs> they have the ability to impeach him. What I'm <laughs> saying is, is that that part of it, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, he basically said, I did, not, I did not find enough cause to say there was collusion with Russia. But I did, I found and and on the other on the obstruction no, I'm not I can't uh, uh, say that anybody should be charged but I'm not saying that he's innocent either. So th that was left open and you have to admit yeah. that Phil it wasn't a closed now, door on that. But one. now uh, the Mueller report is available. Yeah, here we uh, go again. And it's here we go again. Here we form. go again. Yeah, where? Uh, at this, at the Senate. Uh, I mean, at the uh, con no, it's uh, not Congress. A, no, there's no, a no, viewing. No, less redacted is the term they use. Well, there's uh, a small percentage. Less redacted. But, yeah, for the well, yeah, they okay. they want to be able to look at the whole thing. Yes, um, uh, Ray. Yeah, Phil. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that Mueller had made the decision right at the outset that he would never charge anyone with uh, the president with anything because Barr had stated in a, a, a letter that the president could not be indicted, a sitting president. So he said, that, I, there will be no indictment. But That's that, what he said. But the indictment and charge or, or you know, saying that he that he did obstruct uh, is different than uh, charging him. No, no, you but know, he said that he would never say that. He said that he would never 
charge. Say that there was no. He said that he would never say even say that there was an obstruction uh, because that was not. I don't remember was, that. I okay. Who right. who's, who said uh, who said that? I I remember Barr. Mueller. Uh, Mueller. Say, uh, uh, Barr was Barr was quoted as in earlier writings saying that the president couldn't be indicted. Yes, uh, and Mueller. Uh, I don't think Mueller, Mueller had that. an opinion on that. Well, Mueller's no, because his opinion he, was that he had to go with what Barr said because he was the, the attorney general. There was an agency called the OLS or something like that, which is uh, uh, the attorneys at uh, at the White House that were the ones that. Um, uh, made the recommendation as to whether you can indict or not indict. And, uh, okay. Uh, well, it seems like it's kind of a confusing so topic. Like the the facts, like like we don't, and none of us really actually know. Yeah, because there's an office of legal. Yeah, office of legal something. I think it's OLS, uh, mm, and uh, right. they're they're the ones that made the uh, that made a recommendation. But uh, you know, I, okay. I don't think that there's a conspiracy here. No, uh, I don't. I don't think. There's yeah, because if there was, <laughs> Barr didn't have to release it at all. <sighs> but if he did, he would have won a sports Emmy, just like Alex. Boring, <laughs> boring, boring. <laughs> all right. Fucking boring. Oh, oh. You know, okay. I mean, we we've been down this road before. All I know is that Mueller said at one point, "I'm not going to say that he is guilty of collusion, but I'm not going to say that he isn't." Basically, is what it said. And and uh, that is still a bit left open for conjecture. Okay. As for as for the collusion with Russia, that is a closed subject, and we can move on to other stuff. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Iran uh, saying to Saudi Arabia that the U.S. Uh, attacked their pipeline using a uh, false flag drone? Uh, uh, do you think that they're trying to stir up shit? And, what is Ray doing uh, you know, create, now? What is Ray doing uh -huh. now? What is this Ray's doing now? Sit ups. Are you doing sit ups? Push ups. Push ups or something. Push ups or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Push -ups. I, I just wondering, you know, somebody else would call and maybe <laughs> jerk off or something. We could be more interesting than what Phil is saying tonight. Ray, Ray could do that. I mean, he's uh, he's already. <laughs> Yeah, He's already do doing push-ups. Jerk off is just a, a a step away. Yeah. Well, anyway. So <laughs> there's people here. So so where was oh, I? Yeah. A, a, anyway. Um, uh, yeah. Iran. Yeah. Well, you know, he'll make a war over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got a feeling. And, and now the Saudis have shut down that pipeline, which is uh, good for uh, U.S. production of oil. And yeah, you're uh, you're occupied here. Hmm. You're getting preoccupied. Yeah, preoccupied. It's a bright, shiny object, and uh, and now you know <laughs> it's it's got your attention. Well, it, it's kind of like when a baby constantly cries after a while, you don't hear him crying anymore, and that's the same with you droning on about Trump. All right. Well, you know, well, no, really, I'm I'm saying this that you know. All right. How about uh, Roe versus Wade, possible overturn in uh, Alabama? No, it's, it isn't, that isn't, an, over, that isn't an overturn. But what these states are doing, a lot of these states are doing, is they're trying to make some kind of a procedural case that can go to the Supreme Court. And you yeah. know that that decision in Alabama is going to go to the Supreme Court. Sure. You know, uh, oh, and, and a, where, what uh, state the, is what, which state is it where they made it? Illegal? Alabama. No, another state they made it illegal where a, a doctor can get ninety nine years in jail. For I for, thought that was state. Alabama. No, I don't think uh, that's Georgia. Georgia, Georgia passing, passing a, a law. Oh yeah, Georgia yeah. also. Yeah. yeah. And and therefore, Alyssa Milano says no sex for anybody if uh, as long as Georgia is doing that. They don't uh, also don't want to do any movies in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, that could hurt Georgia because a yeah. lot of television production is being done right now in Georgia because they have given big tax rebates. They have built mm -hmm. studios down there. And if you yeah. look at a lot of TV shows, at the end of the show, there's Georgia listed. You yeah. Know, as yeah. Being, even as the production was done in Louisiana, Georgia is a partner in the situation. So if, if all of a sudden Hollywood decides, and Hollywood certainly would decide in this particular case, uh, this is a bad idea, you know. Uh, it, it could very well hurt Georgia's economy, very much so. 
Yeah, I know. My my mother got a lot of work when she was living in Georgia. Uh, you know, uh, acting work. Boy, put, put your thing landscape, will you, Ray? Because you're driving us <laughs> fucking nuts. It's it just, doesn't matter. We're you're looking making at the us ceiling. dizzy. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> What's he doing? He's doing doing every Lord. exercise. <laughs> what are you, Jack Lalane? <laughs> Look at this. Now now he's sideways. He's upside down, folks. I'm not doing any of that. It's just him. Yeah. Yeah. What what do you what, what do you do? What do you... He, he's trying to turn the camera and it's not uh, cooperating. It's not cooperating. Yeah. yeah. It's probably locked now. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll hang up. It's no. because my battery's about to die. Uh, uh, don't hang up. Then you're stuck with me and Charlie. Then there'll just be two of us. <laughs> I'll call back in a little while when I get home. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Anybody else want to call and fit fit that uh, fix, you know fill that square in there? Yeah. Here, let me move. I mean, I'm trying to find some headlines here let that me, might be let interesting. Let me move Phil up there so we have uh, him in the in the right place. Let's see here. Where's Scuba Diver? There we go. Okay. Now, he's going to be in there twice, but I'm going to get rid of him once here. So we'll get rid of three. And uh, da, 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 there we go. Okay. Now, this is, is this all we got, two people? I'm going to sign off, I think, at 1130 tonight if, the, if we don't have more people. I, just, I hope yeah. you get a discount. Uh, uh, what, what's this? Uh, uh, a comedian makes a joke about terrorism and gets arrested? Well, I, just, I just lost it. It was a headline. Uh, where the hell did it go? Um, uh, it looked it looked good, but I I lost it. Did, had you seen that, Alex? What? Uh, the com a comedian makes a uh, no. joke. No. Uh, here it is. Terrorism joke gets cops called on comedian. Okay, I I pushed it. It's Miami Herald. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no no, that's uh, it. Something else came up, not the one I wanted. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch. Uh, all right. Let's see if I can get back. I'm having the same problem with the damn phone. What? You know, I, I either uh, I, I turn it one way and and I and I twist it. I can't get yeah. I can't get out of this. Well, does thing. anybody else intend to call tonight? Because I this is pathetic. This is really yeah. pathetic. This is the worst. Yeah, I've been busy all day. I haven't been watching the news. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's it, it, basically what we got is a, is a you know I got to tell you. Uh, the one oh. thing he's doing that he was very good at, Trump is doing something he was very good at, and I have to give him credit for that. He was very good at going bankrupt, and now it looks like he's doing the same to this country, that we're going to him for financial advice on something that he knows nothing about. You mean the tariffs? Oh, the tariffs, all of that. It's just he's, do well, he's going about it all the wrong way. Do you know... Uh the tariffs go back to even the times of Madison when uh, uh, the, the only ones that were against tariffs were guys like uh, Wilson and FDR who were globalists. Uh, but uh, they found that the tariffs were very successful. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, here, here's what happens, Phil. These tariffs are not going to come back to bite them in the ass. They're going to come back to bite us in the ass, you and me when we go to the store. That's not the, that's not the no, point. No, it is the point. It is the point. Why do we have to suffer? Because he's making a huge, no. huge mistake. You're being very short term on this. The re oh. we're, 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 you I'm not say being suffer. short term, so, Phil. I'm 79 years old. I could only live to be 80. I'm not well, short term on this. Okay. The bottom line here is that people are addicted to cheap products from China. There is a there is if you don't buy those Chinese products, you don't have to pay any tariffs. And and so therefore, if those products become expensive, why not move your operations to Central America, where those people need jobs? And and if you because we, that, we, you we because we have two problems because with one he, stone. he he hasn't he hasn't made nice nice with South America. Yeah. Well, it's not South America. It's it's Guatemala. It's all these countries that need jobs. And if we, instead of moving our uh, our plants over to China, if we started manufacturing in Central America, we would solve a, a lot of things. We'd solve an immigration problem because people would have jobs. They wouldn't want to come here. And uh, and also, you know, these people want to work. 
They're hard workers. They have a great work ethic. Uh, why take this stuff to China? So what it does by putting these tariffs on is it makes Chinese products unattractive. Now, there's $500 billion, uh, you know, half a trillion dollars of goods that we bring over that China sends blah, sells blah, to us, blah, but blah, we're blah, only selling them $60 it, it, billion. It, I, I, you know, your, your sense of the economy is you know everything you read in the in the Well, where else are newspaper. you going to learn this shit? No, you're not learning this shit. You're buying the line that this is what the tariffs will do. What the tariffs are going to do in the end, it's going to start stifling the American economy because people like Charlie and I aren't going to be able to buy goods and services right. because they're going to get gonna too expensive. To and we're not... Oh, shut up a second. Shut up for a second. You... you you, you know, we're That's not the gonna, only one you we're can not, talk we're, to here. <laughs> well, I can get rid of you and I can talk to myself, and I think I could probably keep going for 45 minutes if I had to, Phil. Yeah, uh, but, about okay. Trump. <laughs> no, the fact of the matter is that we're not talking about just electronics. We're talking about shoes. We're talking about food. We're talking about a whole bunch of things that come from China. And if you think China's going to get hurt by it, they, they got the rest of the world to do business with. They've already been hurt by it. It, think oh, think about. Uh, they really you know, look like they're really suffering, Phil. You don't have a problem. You know who's suffering. You, you know who's suffering. China. Did you see the stock market go down yesterday? Yeah, and it went back up. No, it didn't go back up. It only went back up about a third. All right. So you so, know, but this is all short-term stuff, Phil. It isn't short-term stuff because we haven't seen the full blowout of this tariff shit yet. Nope. Yet, because you're going to go to the store one day and you're going to see that all of a sudden, all the things you're used to buying, the prices have just gone berserk. You, you mean and, dog food and, and, that's and, got and, shit and, in it that kills and, the dogs? And, and, no, uh, Phil, that's not what we're talking about. Formaldehyde laced uh, 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 building materials? See, Phil's out of sync. That's, that's, that's hey. great. Uh, he's out of sync and we aren't. Uh, so, you know, formaldehyde based uh, building materials. You know, I'm not going to miss Chinese products in the least. And, and I'm all for the American products, and I'm all for... Yeah, what American products, Bill? What American products? Come on, name some. Uh, well... Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. GE? Uh, uh, their stuff's being made elsewhere as well. Yeah, but it's not You know, the first thing that companies today, when they want to when they want to make a product, and they got a product, and they want to make sure they get the best profit out of it, they send it somewhere else to be made. They don't make it here because... The, the number one, we can't find the labor that will do it here any longer. Well, Vietnam uh, is, is one area. South Korea, well, South Korea is expensive already, but Vietnam, um, uh, Malaysia, mm -hmm. and a number of other countries mm -hmm. and, are and, and already. The, and they'll start up. playing. They'll start playing the same game China has. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't think they have anywhere near the Phil, power. That Phil, China has. the thing is, what happens with Donald Trump is Donald Trump doesn't realize he's living in a new world of economy. And that it's a global economy, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. That's he only knows the problem. he doesn't know how to deal with it. That's the problem. Yes, it that's the problem. He doesn't economy. know how you to deal with it. Be, you want it to be a global co economy, but uh, you know, it's these are the kinds of uh, you know. He wants to go in a different direction. You want to go. You're a globalist. And uh, I'm not a globalist. You know, you Phil, I'm not a government. globalist. I real just realize. That the world is now a marketplace where before we had it all to ourselves, it, and and it's still a marketplace, but it's not a fair marketplace where you. they don't steal I your intellectual property. I got property. news for you. I got news for you. You got other com countries f that you got to worry about more than China. India being a good example. Yeah, but India India has law. They're not stealing our our. Uh, oh our, uh, oh oh! Are you so sure of that, Phil? Yeah. No, you're not. You paused. <laughs> I took a breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, believe me. And do you don't think we've stolen? Of course we've stolen. Okay, then shut the fuck up. Everybody but steals from everybody. That's, right. that's what happens in business. Two wrongs don't make a right. All I know is the one thing that Donald Trump knows how to do best is go bankrupt, and he's going to do it to this country. Yeah, well, if he was Jewish, he would burn the place down. But uh, <laughs> that's my uh, joke. He burned down the place for the insurance money. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, it's called a Jewish barbecue. Uh, now, off off of Trump, it's an Egyptian American comedian that had the cops called him called on him in a stand up uh, set in Florida over the weekend. Uh, an audience member uh, took his joke about terrorism seriously. Guy's name is Ahmed Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. And, hold on a oh, second. I 
Tim has joined us now, uh, so we do have Tim. Uh, even though I don't like the Skype logo, I will put him in the bottom so that. Uh, um, uh, uh, Tim, where is Phil wrong? Where do you start? Uh, Tim? Well, he's, uh, he, do you know Phil owned three radio stations in Florida? Hmm? Who? Phil owns, owns three radio stations in Florida. News they to me. To, there, <laughs> there's three radio stations that, that promise to broadcast two minutes of, of Trump speeches every hour of every day until the end of 2020. Hmm. Is there a reason for uh, that? Starting in, in, in the panhandle, obviously. A conspiracy. Shoot, uh, shoot the immigrants. But. Oh, that's I'll where the post, Democrats put the, the other, IC. Uh, uh, that's where the, yeah, in Panama uh, City, where the Democrats put the IC uh, runway for him to uh, slip. Right. How do you got ice in Panama City, Florida? Uh, you know, on on the ground. They just had a hurricane. Really? Well, uh, it always yeah. gets pretty cold when uh, Trump walks in the room. So. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> bada boom. Um, yeah. You know, there was an, there was also another radio station. I was going to ask Alex. Uh, I think it's also in Florida. That said, they were found. The, the court said they had to register as a foreign agent because they were basically funneling Sputnik, Sputnik news, in the Sputnik programs. What do you mean Sputnik programs? Uh, uh, that's a Russian uh, news agency. No, uh, Sp uh, Sp yeah, Sp it's Sp Sputnik is. I, I've never Came heard of Sputnik. It's crap. owned by the Russian government, and they uh, use the name Sputnik, right, uh, Tim? Correct. It, yeah. Kind of like pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like uh, their propaganda arm. Hmm. Well, you know, not necessarily everything they write is propaganda. I read an article about um, uh, Norway and, uh, uh, geez, what was the, uh, the, uh, the article about? Um, Why are people so happy? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, and, oh, oh, it was about, the, 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 so they, they were basically saying it's a socialist country well and yeah it is you have to give up for health care and all that stuff yet it's the happiest country in the world but norway is right on their border russians they literally hate norway who the russians or the norwegians hate uh the russians russians, the russians hate norway because it threatens them well, how can it threaten it well most of their navy comes out of the, the sea up there it has to go past Norway. So Norway's like oh, yeah. everything they're doing. They don't like that. Hmm. And well, they border. I think they actually have a border to Norway, too. Yeah. On the, on the end of the peninsula. So it's like North Korea on one end and Norway on the oh, other. Oh, Norwegian health minister yeah. uh, said, let the people smoke, drink, eat red meat. Uh, and I guess Norwegians were up in arms uh, but that's that's why their health system works is that they don't smoke and they don't drink uh, uh, and they they don't eat red meat and they exercise and so and because they have sick. doctors constantly watching over them ah, telling them what, oh Jesus Phil can I just finish one statement without you jumping in on it yeah 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 yeah, yeah forget it go ahead it's your show I'm not gonna do anything. They don't get sick because they go to the doctor before it gets too bad. Yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. They get a year's maternity leave, too, so they can bond with their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we lost Phil. And, 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 they, and they honor the rule of law, which is some, some countries have lost that ability to do. Yeah. I mean, Lindsey Graham is a chairman of a committee telling a witness for another committee to take the fifth. Who did he tell to take the fifth? Uh, Don Jr. Don Jr. Well, he has the right take to do that. He has the right to do that. Well, but, uh, but he only had, he, if, he, if he takes the fifth, he has to take it consistently. In other words, if you take the fifth, you then have to continue taking the fifth. If at any point you answer a question, you no longer have that fifth as an immunity. Yeah, right. But, but, but they, they came out with an agreement. He's going to testify for two to four hours in the middle of June. 
uh, and the questions will be li- limited to six areas. So obviously they've negotiated limited questions so that he doesn't have to perjure himself, obviously. But, you know, they really want to find out more about how Russia hacked into our system because it's, ha- it's happening as we speak. Mm-hmm. It wasn't DeSantis in Florida that came out and said, yes, there were two counties hacked into. I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that they, you know, I'm sure that they, they it, it's pretty well agreed that they hacked into the system. Uh, and now the question is, how effective were they? That's that's my well, question. Well, the question is that they didn't need to be too effective because they only won. He only won by eighty thousand votes to most. Who? Yeah, all three states together. Well, all he, three states together. No, right? but here here's the point. Here's oh. the point I'm trying to make. I don't think that all that Facebook action did much of anything. You know. Well, I hated Hillary. I know I ended up hating her. And I was, I felt, sus- I was susceptible. Listen, I hated you know, Hillary I, before there was a Facebook, okay? So. Well, I wanted to hold her feet to the fire and make sure she did, but I think she was at least capable and believed in the rule of law up to a point. Yeah. And, you know, she was guilty of petty crimes, but nothing, nothing like uh, the fraud that the Trump family and the Trump Well, I mean, you know, they, they, they made up all these the crime. She 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 killed Vince Vaughn. Who was it? Vince uh, Foster. Foster. Uh, you know that whole deal. Uh, the Whitewater thing kept going, kept going, even though the Whitewater thing came out to nothing. Uh, and uh, you know they kept do- they kept dogging uh, uh, Clinton pretty much for his whole term until they could get something on him, and they caught him by making him putting him into a position in which any guy would lie. Did you cheat on your wife? That's basically the question that was asked. Right, right. You know, and, but and they knew I want to know what the Russians did with the polling data. I, I want them to get to the bottom of that. And we don't know what the investigation of Russia found out in national, uh, as far as national security well, did, goes. Did, That's did, not did, been released. Did they have the polling data? They, yeah, Cambridge Analytica had it. And uh, they've rec- those people that work for Cambridge Analytica, uh, it came through Jared, those companies have, re, have been reborn under different names, and they're working in our country and other countries as we speak mm-hmm. to do even more sophisticated stuff that's harder to track. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, and and we haven't done really any. I haven't seen any stories about major upgrades of any election system anywhere in this country. And we know there's federal funds that weren't spent. Well, that were you know, look, 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 I got to tell you, the, the, the problem that we have had with the election system is uh, it, it has always been rigged, okay, from the very I, beginning. Well, absolutely. And I don't care how electronic we get, it's still rigged. And you say, well, let's go back to paper ballots. You know what they used to do with paper ballots? They would take the box of paper ballots from a precinct they knew was going one specific way and dump them in the fucking river. All right. Right. So I mean, right. paper ballots don't don't create don't solve any problems. That, that, that happened in Michigan because they were supposed to have a recount around Detroit, and they didn't have enough stuff to yeah, look yeah, at to yeah, even yeah. do a recount. Exactly. Because the stuff was missing. Exactly. And but the, but it, we don't want Russia stuff in the ballot boxes. I don't care if a, 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 an alderman from Chicago does, but I don't, I don't want Putin doing it. If we're if anybody's going to rig our elections, it should be us, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That, we, should, we need a campaign. <laughs> if these are going to be rigged, we're the ones that are going to rig it. We want it done by Americans. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Phil, you can join the conversation now. What? Your microphone isn't on. Where is my microphone? Oh, I lost my microphone. Oh, I threw my <laughs> yeah. micro- I got mad and threw my microphone to the side. You know what's funny is uh, I'd like to know what Phil says. You know they, they went after Burr for uh, sending a subpoena to Don Jr., yeah. but he had the backing of McConnell. Nobody seems to be bad mouthing McConnell. Nothing gets done in the Senate without McConnell approving it. So why is McConnell getting off without any criticism? Hmm. Well, because he's getting the judges appointed. I guess. Yeah. He, that gives him a pass. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that must be what it is. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, I just, uh, but I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, so fed up with the whole thing, 
and 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 the Democrats are 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 becoming idiots themselves. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I don't think they basically have anybody in their group um, who is a good solid challenger against Trump. I I look at Biden. And all I see there constantly is an old doddering man. Now, yes, I, and, and oddly, I, enough, oddly enough, I, I don't see that in uh, what's his name uh, from Vermont, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. I don't see him being a doddering old man. He has a, a kind of an energy to him that's he's, good. He's sharp. He's sharp witted too. But in the case but, of, uh, of of, of uh, uh, Biden, I see. I, I, I just, he just he comes across. Am I, am I right, Charlie? Tell me, do I? I I'm not going to yeah. ask Phil because Phil agree. would agree. Yeah, he's got so much baggage that they'll, they'll just pummel him. Well, he's you got know, so much baggage. Good for him that he's got baggage because that meant that he spent so much time in the Senate that he, there's a paper trail, okay, of mistakes right. and, he's made. Which and so means he so. actually did some stuff. I yeah. didn't like some of it, yeah. but at least he I did. Mean, stuff. Uh, you know, like there are guys like uh, 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 Mayor, what's his name? Mayor, huh? Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete, <laughs> who um, have no real record. You know, a little paper trail. I think his record was maybe he didn't do so good in math in high school. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, paper trail on him. And so maybe he's the best possible candidate because they can't get a lot of stuff on him. All they can do is say... He's gay, and they can't even say that because that's not considered right. So you know. I think, I think the dream ticket for actual abilities would be um, um, Elizabeth Warren. Couldn't win. And yep. couldn't win. Just could I, not I, win. She not, but she is. She is. Uh, she knows her stuff. There are people there that I'm going like to. Uh, Marjorie was saying to me today, "Who's that?" I said, "He's a presidential candidate." And somebody, yeah. I can't even tell you who it was. He was so, you know, he was like the, the governor of some state we never heard of. Yeah, Montana. Montana. Yeah, yeah Montana. Montana. Aren't there two Montana. people from Montana running for president, or is that Colorado? Colorado. Colorado, Colorado there are two I'll, from Colorado. I'll tell you, so, somebody else who's smart is Inslee from the state of Washington, the governor there. Yeah, he, I, yeah. And, 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 and hell, but he's, he's good on the topic of the environment, and we're all dying. In fact, this latest series of uh, events is they're blaming it on. Well, for, forget uh, about that for a second. For, forget about that for a second because that's a whole different topic. And then we get off on that, and then Phil, you know, right. waxes poetic on that. The, but I think the point Harrison is, Warren would the, be point is the point is that a guy if, like if, the guy, the guy from uh, is it War Oregon? Did we say um, Washington. Washington? Washington would probably do pretty well if there weren't so many people running. You know, but he, right. he, he, you got to be louder than the next guy. You got to make more noise than the next guy. And unfortunately, when they're what, 19 now? Something like that? 22. 22 now? Where did yeah, you, where did I, the last, uh, I, this is, this is like uh, the temperature is getting hotter in New York. How hot is it going to be today? Well, it's going to be 72. Well, how many new uh, Democratic <laughs> nominees do we have? I mean, come on, how many of these do you think are even going to make it to January? It, basically, the, the running for president, that's just that's a way to set up a, a dummy corporation and have a bunch of schmucks pay for you to take a, a trip to visit all 50 states. <laughs> well, it's a paid vacation. Yeah, I mean, there are people running, like Mayor Pete, I think, is not a bad idea for a candidate, you know? I mean, he's smart. He's sharp. He's got he's got the goods. You know what? He's been he's an American war hero. He's uh, went to where Harvard was it? He went to. Uh, yeah. And he, he watches Game of Thrones. Don't forget he watches Game watches of Game of Thrones. Watches Game of Thrones. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> yeah. Enough reason right there. By the way, didn't Daenerys really become a horrible woman this week? Anyway. That's what I hear. Huh? Oh, it was it was she. Uh, oh. She will be known forever on as the Blood Queen. You know, she's, uh, she's, a, uh, oh, it was just horrible. Blood will tell. Yeah. Has anybody watched Designated Survivor, the, the Korean edition? The Korean edition? What do you mean the Korean edition? I just saw it today. There's, I think it's on Netflix. There's a Korean edition that has to do, I think it's pretty sure it's Netflix, not Amazon, 
a Korean edition where it's the Korean president that goes through the same thing. And they do it from the Korean angle. Oh, okay. I never heard of that. I do know the designated yeah. survivor is coming back on on Netflix. And last week I had a binge finally on Lucifer, which they brought back, which is like one of my favorite yeah. sh my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. And it was it, terrific, just terrific, better than any t any of the shows they did on the network. Uh, just really good. So I hope they're back for another. You know. you're, you're not a MacGyver guy, are you? No. Okay. Why? They've had, some good, they've had some good ones. They they kill people on that show. He's had a lot of people die. Well, I, every, on Lucifer, somebody's dead every week. There's the body yeah. of the week. No, 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 I mean good main characters, oh. protagonists. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah, but I uh, I really uh, you know. But anyway, uh, so they're bringing back designated survivor for uh, I think a ten episode arc. Uh, we'll see how it does. I mean, I'm glad because but Lucifer and that show were two of my favorite shows, and Netflix saved them, you know. Yeah. But now what's Netflix going to do to save itself? Just saying it seems as though Disney now is taking over Hulu. Oh. Uh, they owned, by virtue of their ABC stock, I think they owed some, owed, owned something like 70% of Hulu. But the rest was owned by um, uh, who's the uh, who's the cable company? Um, oh, I'm trying to remember now. The one I think that owns NBC, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, anyway, uh, but they're buying out that portion of it eventually, and so ABC is now going to own that as well. Do you think this is getting to be a monopoly? Yeah. I mean, there in at least in the entertainment business, isn't isn't um, isn't that getting to be a bit of a uh, of a monopoly going on? Because um, they own everything. Yes, Phil. They're talking about Facebook being a monopoly and uh, breaking up, you know, uh, all of these. Um, uh, you know, types of well, um, Facebook, communications. Facebook, I don't think, is monopoly. Facebook, well, they're saying that you got Instagram, you got uh, Facebook, and that uh, they're controlling too much. Well, I mean, uh, well, how about Google? Mm -hmm. Well, that too. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm just I'll uh, tell you uh, something. It's telling you what's in the news. It's happening in your neck of the woods, which is the Bay Area. This whole thing with Google and the punchline and the possibilities that the Google bought that building and is throwing the punchline out in order to turn it into a gym for Google workers. Uh, 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 isn't workers. that building the Rockefeller uh, built? Uh, what, what do they call those buildings? Uh, one, two, three, and four. It's um, uh, the, the, uh, the yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It was built by Rockefeller. I don't know if it was built by Rockefeller. Uh, originally? Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Embarcadero Center? Embarcadero Center, it? yes. Yeah, Embarcadero 1, well, 2, supposedly 3, Supposedly Google has at least, if not bought that part of it, bought the whole thing. Yeah. Well, and what happens is, here's what happens. Here's what happens. Yeah. San Francisco was one of the most distinctive cities in the United States. I, I don't think we could argue that, you know? It just was a very distinctive, beautiful city. They didn't allow high rises, and it, not until yeah. Feinstein. It's was being mayor. ruined. It is now oh, yeah. being ruined by these people who come in from Minneapolis, Omaha, whatever, trying to make it in their own image. Hey, so the punchline's been there for 41 years. Big deal. Let's buy it. Let's uh, put it out of business. Let's put a gymnasium in here. You know, well, if that's it's viable, what's wrong. That's they what, no, move but, it. but that's what's. No, that you can't. You can move it, but you can't have the same thing. Man, it's something I wondered about. It's a brick I, wall I, with a curtain. It, 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 there's something in the bones of that room, okay? There's a history to that room. And it was still doing good business, so it wasn't like they were, you know, in bad yeah. shape. They were ready to sign a new deal for $23,000 a month. That's less than a thousand dollars a day in rent, considering you know what their door is. Well, they were offered it at twenty three thousand. Okay, yeah. all right. So uh, they were willing to sign it, but all of a sudden they were told, "Well, we're not going to give you the lease." 
And uh, according to according to uh, Bubbles, there's a there's a very heavy rumor going around that it was Google who did it because they want to turn it into a gym. Well, you know, if they bought now, the now, but here's the question. Building, here's the question. A lot of offices. They do have two other punchlines. There's one in Walnut Creek. No more. No more. Okay, so that's uh, gone. How about the one in Sacramento? I don't know. I, I, you need a passport to go to Sacramento. I yeah, haven't yeah, been wait, there. Wait, wait. Punchline Sacramento. Let me see if there's still a punchline in Sacramento. They did away with the one in Walnut Creek? Yeah, there, there's uh, something in Livermore, but it's uh, or Pleasanton, but it's not punchline. No, it's something not. else. No, no, but there's a punchline Sacramento here. Let's see here. Uh, punchline Sacramento, the menu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no Walnut Creek. It. it, it, it it was. It's around the. It was around the corner from where I live now. I could. Wa I walk out my parking lot. And it's, oh, wait, it was here there. we go. Here we go. Here we go. I. I. I'll get it here. Hold on a second. The Punchline Sacramento. Uh, um, where is it? I just had it. I don't know. Sacramento's info. fifteen years behind the times, so of course they're still into comedy. Okay, here we are. Yeah. No, it's still there. It's Not in Walnut Creek. Oh, I didn't look in Walnut. Creek. You want me to look up okay. Walnut Creek? I, I, I don't know from Sacramento. The, you do know from uh, Walnut Creek? Yeah, because it used to be right around the corner from my apartment. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Walnut uh, Creek. If I walked through the park, uh, it was it was right there on Bo Theo or however you pronounce that street. Uh, Botello. They say the 10 best comedy clubs in Walnut Creek. But there nothing. are ten. <laughs> Punchline Comedy Club, Walnut Creek. Let's see here. Um, hey, my, my son did some. My dad, my son did some stand-up comedy comedy tonight. Did he? Yeah, up in the northern Michigan area. What's it? What, what comedy tonight wasn't done in that in Michigan. Maybe. No, no, he, he just no, he did a stand up at a local club. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. He went physically tonight. His comedy at night was a show I was the host of. So. Oh, okay. I didn't. I'm sorry. That was a Freudian slip. A fright? No, Freudian would be if you said something with it, had the word "fuck" in it or something. Or oh. Had a double entendre it's, sexually. It, it's the thought that counts. It's yeah. Did you find anything in Walnut Creek for punchline? No. No, I think oh, it's, that's it, not, it's been gone for years. Yeah. Oh, well, see, that's how long I've been away, you know. Um, but they still have the one in Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, in Sacramento, they're just, comedy is just starting to hit the scene there. It's starting to hit, yeah. <laughs> but, it seems like they're having more stand-up comedians on the late night shows now, so. Yeah, but it, 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 it yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't watch those late night shows. I, I know that Kimmel doesn't seem to have stand ups. Uh, uh, who's the one that Boot Ed Edge was uh, was on uh, when after he got called Alfred E. Newman and he said he didn't know what that was? Was it Coleman or Colbert? No, I don't think so. It was one of those other Steve uh, Colt. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm not sure. No, all those guys look alike. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, um, the only thing they don't do is tap the pencil on the desk like Johnny did. Yeah, they also don't do a good show <laughs> like Johnny did. Johnny did. Yeah. They don't have Doc Severinsen anymore. Either. I mean, the yeah. only one that I like really is Kimmel. I think Kimmel is the only one doing a traditional late night talk show. You know, uh, and I think he's terrific. Uh, Alex, do you visit San Francisco? When was the last time you were in your old neighborhood, the marina? 1941. <laughs> I haven't been back to San Francisco since we got married out there. Yeah, I haven't been back. And, and by going, if I go back, I'm probably just going to take a month off from the show or whatever and just go out there and do the show from out there, do a remote. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> On the road with Alex. Yeah. I, I don't have the remote equipment. I don't have a portable machine that has the power to do this. So. Do it from here. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know. Um, 
So, oh, did you get my note back about uh, about Rob and the machine and your board? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it wasn't a, a money thing. He he just doesn't want to put the time into fixing it up. Yeah. I I thought that maybe he'd just use it as as something that he could solo with, you know, because he was saying that he he can't hear. Uh, you know, when you use a board, you, yeah. you got a solo well, well, on it. All you he has to do, he, he, he could do something very simple. He could go buy a, a $25 mixer to add to his computer and just talk right. into his computer. All I need is right. the audio out of him. And what I can do is if I really need the audio, and I'm going to talk to him about this, I we can just do it on Skype. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, it's not good. Because his audio is that good that, you know. Yeah. But. Uh, it's just that his uh, his whole studio kind of fell apart, and he just never had the yeah I know I, I desire asked to put it back a, together. A promo, uh, you know, with uh, I don't know if uh, Happy Days Are Here Again is uh, is free uh, of uh, what do they call it when it's not duty free? Um, uh, you don't have to pay. In the public uh, domain. Well, public domain, and uh, you know, Happy Days Are Here Again Actually, is still I have a place free. I can go here. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, you go on the YouTube, and there's a thing here. And uh, let me see here. Find out if uh, a show, a music is. No, that's an audio library. What is the music policies? Uh, search what music. What do they call that? Okay. I search forgot. Music. You know, Happy Days are here again. Yeah. Uh, Revenue free. I, I, you know, I know with photography, it's the same thing. That you, some pictures you can use and some you can't. And public domain, it's called. Public domain. That's it. Okay, let's see here, folks. Let me see if I hit Happy Days are here again. What do we get? Do we get anything? No. Here, here we go. Happy Days are here again. The Glee cast. But I don't know if that's in. Uh, Public domain. If viewer worldwide ads can appear blocked in 198 countries if I perform it. Okay, but uh, oh, here here's Barbara Streisand. Can't use well, that. That'll be. That uh, well, be uh, Barbara thing. Streisand, you can do um, ads can appear. Okay, viewable worldwide. Happy days oh. are here again. Ben Selvin's orchestra. Uh, okay. That would work. That, that, mm. No, well, that, again, it's viewable worldwide, but I ads can appear. <laughs> but where's Happy Days Are Here Again? Where I don't have to pay that. Uh, yeah, and then you know, do I? I said you know, do a voiceover. You know, it's fill free, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way I can do it. I, I, I can do it. Uh, I just they they ads can't appear in my show, which or can appear before the show, but that's oh. no big deal. That's no big yeah. deal. I'm not I'm not worried about that. Uh, All right. But no, they the happy days are here again. It should. You would think it would be in public domain. Yeah, yeah, that's right? what I thought. That's yeah. what you would think. But and so I thought it would make a nice promo. You know, it's strange about public domain. Uh, do you know why it's a it, for instance, it's a wonderful life is not a great movie. You know, mm. it's if anything it is the uh, the essence of Frank Capra which they used to refer to as Capricorn. Yeah, but it's a good Christmas movie. You no, know, it's not a great Christmas. It's just, you know why it became so popular? I'm assuming that it didn't cost anybody anything to that, show it. That's right, because it went out of copyright. And so when oh, stations wow. found this, they just started, everybody, five stations would be playing It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas night at the same time. Well, somebody somewhere said, we got to get the rights. The rights. To, to to It's a Wonderful Life. So what they found was the picture was out of copyright, but the music wasn't. Mm. So they went and got the rights to the music, and Republic, Republic Pictures became the owner of It's a Wonderful Life. The good thing about that was you got a consistently good copy of it, where before you would be watching a blurry one or one that you know was out of sync, uh, is that the movie that they took some part out of it so that uh, the music wasn't in the beginning, I think, or or one of those things? What, what was that movie that I, I know that they chopped uh, a part out because the, the over the music? I think not the, being... the, sometimes what happens is there's music used in a picture and then their right to use it runs out. Oh, it might be Star Wars. 
No, 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 uh, no. 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 Well, something like that. I, 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 I seem to think remember some story like that. Yeah. But the fact was that things ran out of uh, out of copyright. Um, the music would run out of copyright. I'll give you a good example. Something very interesting. Do you know the first nineteen episodes of Star Trek are not in copyright? Yeah, but so, is that so, somebody forgot to uh, renew uh, to to renew the uh, it, yeah or to or to even file for yeah. them? Hmm. So nineteen episodes went into public domain. What happened was eventually, to make a big deal out of it, um, Paramount to protect it. Uh, went out and copy wrote the music. That's the one. And, and so you can't Star use Wars you can't Star use Star Trek. Wa- Star Trek without using the music. So obviously, yeah. you know, uh, I'll okay. give you a good. I'll give that, you a very good example though. Do you ever yeah. watch any of these stations that run old Johnny Carson shows? Yes. Uh, YouTube, you know. Yeah. Um, Tell me, I, I don't think they use the, the Tonight Show theme at the beginning. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. They, they use something, some other piece of music um, in there with uh, Ed McMahon saying, uh, they took the, the isolated here's Ed Johnny. McMahon, here's Johnny, but, and then they cut to the show. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to remember if they used the music or they did something, but they, they, the openings do not have the traditional Tonight Show opening. Yeah. Uh, that, oh, that, I know. That. No, I know what it was. It wasn't the music. It was the name, The Tonight Show. Ah. Uh, they couldn't so use now the it's name, The Tomorrow the show? show? They couldn't use The Tonight Show. It, 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 uh, all of them were redone, so they were cut in the beginning and say The Johnny Carson Show. Uh, that's right. Uh, because there's still a Tonight Show, isn't there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that's what they changed. So I see. Uh, these are things that sometimes will will change. But there have been movies where they've changed the music on them because they the music w- ran out. Was there was a great um, there's a great documentary series if you ever can lay your hands on it called Hollywood the Pioneers. It's 13 episodes. They ran on uh, public broadcasting stations here in the United States, uh, done by David Brownlow and uh, uh, was it David Brownlow? Is that his name? And and a guy by a guy by the name of Gill, and they it was a history of silent movies, and it's wonderful. But you can't find a copy of it anywhere. And the reason you can't find a copy on it anywhere is they had the rights to use the film clips up to a certain time period, and then they would have to renew them after that point. So they don't sell the the the, the episodes anymore. They're not huh. available. And then they did one on World War. Uh, what was it? Movies. Uh, 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 silent films uh, in foreign countries. There were six episodes of those. I have a copy of that. That copy I own is worth about $300 because you can't get it anywhere because all the rights to all the clips have run out. So, mm. so there's... Yeah, a, well, what would you do with it if the rights had run out? What would somebody do with it other than a, a, be a collectible? Well, it's a collectible uh, that I can sell for three hundred dollars or even more if I put it out on the open market. But I'm not going mm. to. It's sitting right back here. It's called Cinema Europe. A great series, David Brownlow, once again. Mm. Um, and and uh, so I mean, it's very funny about copyrights and how they run out and uh, what things stay in copyright and what don't. My friend Shecky used to be a big expert on it because there was a time when you could copyright something for thirteen years. And then you could re-copyright it for an additional 13. And then it went out of copyright. Then it went into public domain. What and happened it, to the 50-year thing? Well, they didn't know. They did away with that version of it. Yeah. And I think they went to either a 50-year with a renewable for another 50. Or, or they it was went 50 for, after a or, death. Or it was the life of the creator plus 50. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Well, thank life, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So all that has changed. So a lot of those pictures that were in public domain, I don't think are in public domain any longer. So, mm. Oh, because the deal changed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I can't remember what it is. In fact, next, next time I talk to Shecky, which will be any day now, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll ask him what the current copyright laws are. Yeah. Well, we all know that a happy birthday uh, was, uh, was uh, not in the public domain. 
And oh, happy birthday you know, isn't in the public domain. You, it was not. You're right. And, and uh, I can't remember. I think was it Michael Jackson who got the rights to it. I'm not sure. I know I he bought the rights to the Beatles. <laughs> he, well, no, he bought the Beatles library. Yeah. Yeah. He, and uh, they tried to buy it back. Uh, yeah, I, they may have, uh, or Paul McCartney might have bought it back. I, I remember after uh, Michael Jackson's death, there was something uh, going on with that. Yeah, but Michael Jackson, I think, owns owned Happy Birthday, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Hold on a second. I know somebody did. Who and, owns Happy uh, Birthday? And, who, and they wouldn't let anybody use it unless they paid. Who owns Happy Birthday, Birth? Day to you. Boom. Let me see here. Who owns Happy Birthday to You? Uh, Sunny, the Sumi Corp Company, registered in 1935. Blah, 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 blah. Then Chapel Music Company, owning the copyright. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, th apparently, it's. Uh, wait a minute. Does Michael Jackson own the rights to Happy Birthday? By the way, though some think otherwise, Paul McCartney nor Michael Jackson have ever owned the song. Apparently, Warner brings in over $2 million a year from royalties from Happy Birthday, wow. which they claim they acquired through a company they bought in 1998 for $25 million. The music business is uh, tough for sure. Uh, it's, it, but it makes $2 million a year. So we can't even wow. sing it on this program without having a flag go up at the YouTube, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Interesting. And if we find that uh, that Google has has bought that building, the punchline is in. Uh, and, well, and I'm going to have a crisis of faith here because I'm going to have to drop YouTube. Well, why don't you ask uh, wherever you're asking uh, who owns the Embarcadero Center in San Francisco? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll ask it later. I don't want to have right. to do all that typing now because I'm lazy. Okay. Well, you have Alexa. I mean, you, you can ask. Okay. Uh, Echo, who owns the Embarcadero Center in San Francisco? San Francisco supervisors have banned the use of facial recognition software. <laughs> <police and laughs> no. That didn't work. Well, so okay. much for Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Echo, shut up. <laughs> Echo, shut up. <laughs> Echo, shut up. <laughs> Be nice. No, that's Jeff Bezos's revenge. She's just a, you know, she's just a, uh, um, a figment of my uh, imagination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I walked in there. Um, you know, I don't own one of those, and uh, I hadn't any reason to want to have one, but uh, they were selling twenty nine dollars uh, at the uh, at the brick and mortar Amazon store. What were, what the, were they selling the Amazon? Uh, the the uh, the, uh, the Alexa, uh, whatever the thing is, Dot, something like that. The, the Twenty-nine dot, bucks. Well, Dot is the one that I have here in the office. Yeah. yeah. Do you need the big one to have a Dot, or can you have a no, Dot without? You, the you big can have one? the Dot without the big one. Just it doesn't have great sound to it, sound quality to it. No. Oh. Um, but I have that little one, the the, the uh, round one that you can put by your bed. I use it as a clock, my old like a clock radio. And it's uh -huh. perfect. The sound is wonderful out of it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I have a CPAP machine I keep next to the bed. <laughs> I don't know. know why you're out of sync. Now I bet you're in sync. Say something, Phil. All right. Uh, yeah, I you're was more, uh, you're shopping more, for echoes. You were more in sync than you were a while ago. Oh. Well. Yeah. It, uh, I'm in pretty perfect sync. Thank you for nobody for calling. Uh, you yeah, know. thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. Anyway. Uh, but my, my main camera is out of sync, I'll have to say. But it'll go well, back. Well, you know what? what? You've made it. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> by the uh, uh, Yeah. And by changing the subject to royalty and non-royalty music, and Tim fell asleep, I think, somewhere there. Anyway. He thinks it's a conspiracy, this music thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, Tim, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure he was still there. Uh, same thing to you, Charlie Wallace. Thank you. And thank you to Phil Meyer. And tomorrow will be a Phil free night. Uh, everybody wave goodbye and I'll wave back, okay? All right. Yeah, I'm not moving my mouth because it's like, uh, no, what it, what it is, see how I'm out of sync? Now, if I hang up on these guys on Skype, 
watch how I immediately go into sync, okay? There they go, and I'm back in sync. You see? Well, oh, I just love Skype. They suck so badly. I just want my other machine back, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with uh, the, uh, the intersection. And uh, then uh, let's see here. Tomorrow night we have a sports show uh, with uh, the franchise MC at 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And then at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time, we got Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And then I'll be back again tomorrow night. Same station in life in the meantime. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.